Hey everyone, the Game Beast here. Welcome back to another video. Today we will be going over the updated Kisiwa locations as far as it goes for TV training. Now these will all be the most optimal places to TV train your Temtem in each particular stat in the game at this point so far. So let's get right into it everyone. Something I'd like to mention before we get started is to make sure you have the protein item if you are planning on TV training at all. This is a gear item that can be obtained in the Giant Banyan after completing the story segment there. It's going to be on the bottom of the Giant Banyan. Go ahead and find it there in an item box. But that is absolutely critical if you want to do TV training most optimally and efficiently. One thing I want to point out before you get started is if you do wish to train multiple Temtem at the same time in addition to having one equipped with the protein, you do have the option of adding one with a Coward's Cloak into the mix as well. Coward's Cloak is an item obtained at the bottom of Windward Fort. If you surf around the bottom outside there, you'll have to defeat some of the Bell Soto grunts. But when you obtain that item, you can use it for this purpose. So if you have a Temtem that needs to be trained up in the same stats that you're already training for your first Temtem, you can bring along a second one and equip it with that Coward's Cloak, and it will take that initial value that it gets. So we're going to be going in a descending order of the stats here. So the first one will be HP. So in order to farm HP, you're going to make your way to Denny's Island and go north of Arisola towards the Windward Fort. Instead of going to the right path towards the Windward Fort though, you'll be going onto the water with your surfboard and going south to the Gifted Bridges. This patch down here will spawn only Saipat, 100% spawn rate. And defeating Saipat will give you 3 HP TVs each. With the proteins equipped, that makes out to 6 TVs per Saipat defeated. So if you have multiple double encounters, you're looking at 12 HP TVs per encounter here. That is a pretty good rate with 100% encounter rate, so this is absolutely recommended. My Temtem that I recommend you bring to the spot is going to be Nesla. Use Chain Lightning. You'll be able to chain into the Saipat slots and into Nesla and KO them all in one fell sloop on turn 1 making this the absolute by far and away best spot to train HP. And then next up we have the Stamina stat. Stamina will be trained by defeating Teiteru. These Teiteru will be spawning in a patch close to Sci Park, which is south of Arisola and south of Brickle de Mar. You're going to have to go into this patch right here. It will have a 100% spawn rate of spawning only Teiterus. Once again, you can have single or double spawns, so Teiteru will be yielding you two stamina values each with the proteins equipped it'll be yielding four each so this is absolutely the place to go if you wish to farm stamina now let's move on to a brand new location here this is going to be for farming attack this is going to be in the earth shrine in Kisiwa if you go into the Shini Grotto which is just south of the big desert on the end area of Kisiwa you'll be able to go into the dark cave and make your way to the Earth Shrine where you will encounter Osukai in the Wild Patches there. Osukai, when defeated, will yield 4 attack TVs, which is pretty substantial, and meaning when you defeat it with the proteins equipped, you will be obtaining 8 attack TVs each. So, pretty nice location, also a good location if you want to do maybe some leveling in addition to TV training your attack on top of it. The 10 time you're going to want to make sure to bring along to farm these is going to be Kinu or Ukama for survivability or taking out the Osukais faster. And then moving on to the defense stat, you're going to be farming Lapinite in Tukma in the mines. If you go just south of Tukma, you're going to go to this location here, which actually can spawn both Lapinite and Crystal and Gialis. But Lapinite does spawn here at an 85% spawn rate and it will give you two defense TVs each, meaning it'll give you four defense TVs total if you have the protein items equipped. And then moving on to the special attack stat, you'll be farming Toxolotl. You're gonna wanna make sure to bring a Volarend when defeating these. If you go ahead and defeat them, they will use Toxic Farewell, meaning you will be poisoned if you are the one KOing it and you don't have that poison resistance on it. So Volaren is definitely the way to go, put a lure on it, and go ahead and proceed to take out the Toxolotls. Toxolotl has a 100% spawn right here, giving you two special attack TVs each, meaning it'll give you four special attack TVs after the protein. And then moving on again, let's go to special defense. You're going to be going to Windward Fort back in Denny's Island. If you go and go ahead into the Windward Fort and go down three separate levels, you'll make it to the water area where you had to rescue the Dojo Master. So if you defeat FOMO here, you'll be gaining two special defense TVs, meaning you'll be gaining four after the proteins, and FOMO also does have a 100% spawn rate here, making this the best option for special defense. And then for the final stat, let's move on to speed. There's actually a new way that you can handle this even quicker. So let's get into it. You'll be going to Tukma, and you'll be going to the spot where the Narwhal crashed. You'll be training against Orphil and Mushi there, who will both be giving you two speed TVs each. 
So with the proteins, they'll both be giving you four speed TVs. Orful and Mushi both have a 45% spawn rate each, meaning that 90% of the time you will be hopefully getting an Orful or a Mushi. Now the time I think you should bring along in order to do this faster is to bring along Tukai. Tukai has a new trait called Spreader, which whenever it uses a special type attack, it'll actually turn it into a spread move rather than a single target move. So if you use something like Windburst on turn 1, you're going to be able to KO both Orphil and Mushi right away and get those TVs and make this a lot faster for you. I also recommend to bring along a physical move such as Feather Gatling to deal with either the single Orphil or Mushis that spawn and not having to take out the blues that spawn so you don't mess up your TV values. But definitely Tukai is the way to go here it makes it a lot faster. But that covers it for all of the optimal TV farming spots in Temtem so far. We got some new spots with addition to Kisua as well as some new farming methods to make it a little bit faster. Don't forget to get the proteins to increase your stack gain and don't forget to equip your Coward's Cloak if you wish to transfer some TVs onto a second Temtem that you wish to train up as well. But that will do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this helps you out. And I hope you guys are enjoying the competitive aspects of Temtem as well as just Temtem as a whole. But please feel free to leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe for more Temtem content in the future. And otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.